showmanship. That's what this is about. Stick tricks. It's something that I have the privilege to do on the Alice Cooper gig. It's totally warranted, it's okay. That is my first tip when it comes to doing showmanship, all the flippy stick stuff. You don't wanna do this in the wrong place. I gotta say that up front. That is the icing, that's not the cake, okay? But I'm gonna show you my method for doing this and how I work it into grooves and patterns, okay? Now, I've noticed that so many drummers have so many different ways of how they might do their so-called stick tricks, but I gotta say up front, kids, do not focus on this as your number one priority, and don't do it in the wrong song. You don't wanna be playing some sensitive ballad and try to, you know, work in your stick Look at me, look at me, you know? Hey, look at me getting fired. I'm done, why did I get fired? I don't know, I was doing so great. No, don't do it in the wrong place. Even on the Alice Cooper gig, on the ballads, I'm not doing it. Okay, but getting right to it. How do I do the stick flip, as it's called, or twirl, whatever? I get asked this all the time. Okay, cigar grip. No, I don't smoke cigars, but that's the cigar grip okay, between those two fingers. And the way I got it going years ago was you take those fingers, put the stick between them, use the index finger to get it going like this, straight up and down. And for me, as I'm looking at the stick, see, I use it, my index finger, to make the stick start turning clockwise. For you, looking at it through the camera, it's counterclockwise for you. That's my right hand. That's how I get that going. So some people might call that a fake twirl. Like, oh, it's fake, man, that's fake. Well, you know what? Fake or not, I think it looks pretty cool when you work it into certain patterns. And for the left hand, it's the same thing, getting it going straight up and down and then using the index finger, that's this finger right here, to get it turning, for me, counterclockwise, for you, clockwise, as you're looking at me, right? So now the question is, what do you do with this? How do you incorporate this stuff? Well. I would say first, get used to playing a single stroke while doing that in between. Now, for some reason, I do it backwards. I didn't even know I was doing it backwards until one day some guy said, oh yeah, you do that backwards. I do? Okay. I can't do it any other way. I can't, I can't do it forwards, whatever forwards is. Some people s stick with this grip. They don't change it. No, I change. That finger needs to move back and forth. So get used to getting a single hit Right, that's what I like about backwards because, see, the stick is already headed in that direction after the rebound, right? So, hi-hat, any drum. That would be the first move, and then getting it going with the left as well. You wanna get a nice solid hit. That could sometimes prevent you from getting a solid hit when you have this grip, but you can get used to a rim shot with that grip without hurting yourself, but then I got it to the point where I could alternate single strokes or doubles. How about right? This is something where your imagination really has to kick in. So, if I'm talking about playing an actual drum groove, one of the easiest kinds of grooves to work this into would be a rock groove where the hi-hat is playing a quarter note. It could be something like. Right, or it could get a little faster. It depends on how fast you could do it while not interrupting the flow of the groove. That's what you don't want. You don't want this to mess with what you're doing and have the band look back at you like, what happened, you just dropped a beat, you missed something? No, do it to where it's comfortable. So, the quarter note can get a little faster, I could still hang with it up until a certain tempo. Now that last one right there, 
that's my next step. You want to be able to make substitutions to make room to accommodate the stick trick, right? Now, if we're talking quarter notes, if they start getting a little fast, you can substitute a left on the hi-hat for a right. I'll show you what I mean. If you're playing... See, the left plays on the one or on the three, just for that one note. See, now it gives me the time to do that. Because now the tempo's getting a little too fast to really knock those out and get a nice solid hit out of it. So, that same idea I just did, that can apply to playing on the crash with that same stick trick. Now again, this is something, it took me a minute to feel comfortable in getting a solid hit with that sort of unconventional weird grip. So again, left hand hi-hat, and then the right hand will come down on the hi-hat or a crash cymbal on the two or four with the snare, like. So it'll be something like this. See, my left hand could just go back and forth between hi-hat and snare quarter notes, and the left hand stays doing that, and the right hand can be busy doing this stuff if it, if it works. Now that's with quarter notes. Eighth notes, different thing, same idea though. Substituting. See, I played a left instead of the right. One and two and three and four and. See, it's the and of one or the and of three because that's right before the backbeat. One. I'll tell you a song I do this on, on the Alice Cooper set, I'm 18 by Alice Cooper, because it has that sort of slow eighth note pattern going in the, the verse section. See, now there I did a double. I went uh, one, two, three, and four. Right, left, together. Right, so the finger is moving back and forth a lot, the index finger. But it's effective, you can get a crash in on two or four. Right, and double strokes, remember I mentioned that before? If you can get that up to a decent clip, well, maybe you can turn that into a groove, like... Uh Many places we can go with this. I'll tell you, we do the song Poison all the time. It's a great Alice Cooper song, great hit song. I love playing it. I count off the beginning, the beginning of the song. It's like uh, one, two, three, four. That's more or less how I do the beginning of that song. 
and it just works. It's a song where it's totally cool to do the visual thing. The one last area I'd like to talk about with this is working it into patterns, hand-foot combinations. Uh, one of the first ones that comes to mind is based on Bonham. I've mentioned him before in different lesson series here. Well, you know the Bonham stutter, right? The bass drum stutter, good times, bad times. That would be this. Uh right, we love practicing that. It's a great right foot exercise, really effective in cool rock situations. Well, I've slowed that down where I could get maybe both hands playing that quarter note. And worked in a, a double twirl deal, right? Or maybe every other time, if it's a little faster. So, and that works over 16th notes as well, and then it's over the bar line. Like I said, I, I can get carried away with this and show you too many examples, but that's a good one. And that double twirl thing, I've, I worked that into actual grooves at one point, like. I don't know, some people think that one looks silly, but you know what, it's entertaining. The Alice Cooper show is about putting on a show. He wanted to make sure that his band is not just standing there or sitting there playing their instruments. It's so much more than that. So patterns, right? I talked about this. The bottom stutter. How about the double bass version of that, right? Where you've got one with the hand or hands playing together and then the two. Right, so if you can get that going where you can alternate it, either double strokes, then you can work in the stick tricks. That's something I developed way, way back. And then doing it as single strokes. Right? It's been a very cool, effective thing. It's a pattern that's been around forever, but that's kind of a different take on it, where you play and you have a space there to do a sort of stick trick. And there is one other hand-foot combination I like doing this in, and I know this has been covered on Drumeo. I'll bet Greg Bissonette covered this lick. There's many names for it. You guys know what I'm talking about in the control room. I see it, I see it. Uh, people call it the ladder. They call it the helicopter, they call it the single stroke roll between four limbs, it's, it's this lick. Well, since it's already been touched on, I'll just give you a quick reminder of what it is. Right hand, left foot, left hand, right foot. So it crosses, you got right and then left, left and then right foot. Think about that, an X, right? So, cool lick. I think Vinnie Coliuta was the first to come up with it, come up with the idea, because he's just that crazy to come up with something that out there. So, I figured out a way to get double strokes going. This is something I've used in solos for years, where you change the sticking pattern from singles to double strokes, or whatever, once you have the initial pattern down, which is, again, right hand, left foot, left hand, right foot.
So that's just a little bit of some of the things I've been able to do with stick tricks. They have their time and their place. If you're playing like on the Celine Dion gig or something like that, don't do it. I'm giving you a public service announcement. Don't do the stick tricks in the wrong place. You'll be out of a job, man. Just don't do it. Only when it's warranted. All right, we'll see you at the next thing.